What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and we were nominated by John over at Gentleman and Whiskey. I'll put his link in the description below in the video that he made right up above us here. He put out a video called Every Whiskey Collection Needs These Five Bottles, and that's what we're going to follow up with today. This is a spinoff of the Reddit article that came out a few years ago. Everybody made a video like that. This is his kind of twist on that particular video, so let's get into the rules about it right now. So John came up with five different categories that you need to put a particular bottle in. Now, everybody can have a different bottle. These aren't the best bottles in your whiskey collection. These aren't the top five whiskeys in your collection or anything like that. There's five specific categories, which kind of breaks it down into, I would say, different occasions. Now, the first category that we're going to go with is very easy for me. This is cheap and versatile one. This is the one that basically not going to break the bank under 30 bucks, can do anything with it, right? Can put it on neat can put it on neat, can put it on ice, can keep it neat, can put it in a cocktail or anything like that. You don't mind giving it to your friends. Anybody can basically drink it. And this one for me was very, very easy. This one is going to be Old Grandad Bonded. Now, I used to go back and forth between Evan Williams Bottled and Bond and Old Grandad Bonded, but it seems like Old Grandad Bonded kind of just put itself in front of that one for me for now, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. I absolutely love this bottle. Again, with that peanutty flavor, I love putting it into cocktails to give it a little bit of sweetness. I can drink this on the rocks, I can drink this neat, and I love this bottle pretty much anytime I need to pour up a glass. Speaking of which, I'll go with a rocks glass tonight. Usually go with the Glen Karen, but tonight we're not really sipping for flavor. We're just sipping to sip and make this video right here. And of course, before we get into category number two, everybody knows time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. It's just so good. Now there's a bunch of good bottles that you can put into this category and John does a very good job of breaking down all the different bottles that he thought about for this category and I won't tell you which one he ends up picking. He does say Old Grandad is one of them so I'm glad I picked one that was on his list at least but Old Grandad for me is just far and ahead the number one that I have again with Evan Williams Bottle and a Bond coming in second but let's get into category number two right now. Now, category number two is called the rough one, and this was a very rough one for me to pick as well. Now, this is the one that it's only Monday and you still got to get through the entire week. You want a high proof bourbon, only have a drink or two, tie something on and call it a night, right? And I couldn't think of what I was going to pick for this. I had so many options and somehow at the end of it all, for anybody who's been following me for long enough knows that they did not think I was going to pick this. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, especially this C923, is a bottle that I can just use any day of the week to really make sure that I can get through the day. Now, the reason this one became a little bit tough for me is because when I first started watching his video, he said, tie one on, right? Get through Monday, high proof, what's it going to be? But then he said, you know, doesn't really break the bank. So originally I was thinking maybe my stags, maybe my stag store picks, but while those don't really break the bank MSRP wise, they are a little bit more hard to find, a little bit more unicornish compared to something like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I feel like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof has that name behind it. Everybody's starting to love these. There's some good batches. There's some bad ones. This one right here, I absolutely loved. 133 proof, 13 years, seven months. And again, I can find it on the shelf for that $60 price point. So this compared to a stag is why I lean more towards Elijah Craig Barrel Proof instead of a stag. Now, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof isn't something I always loved. It's something that took me a while to kind of ease my way into, especially at the proofs that we're talking about. But these days, this is something that I can crush, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, or definitely a Monday, and I need to get through it. Let's get into category number three. Cheers. Now, category number three is called the craft one. Now, I'm going to cheat just a little bit here. Now, the rules were this basically can't be a major distillery, right? It can't be any of your buffalo traces or your wild turkeys. And I even took it a step further, which I believe John says, but none of the source stuff as well. We know some smaller distilleries that source some whiskey. So I went, and again, I don't know if this is cheating or not, but I went with Sagamore. Is Sagamore still craft or is this big enough? This happens to be the Dusty Dan debut. If you're not following Dusty Dan, make sure you check him out. But Sagamore Spirits, the rye, the double oak, dry. It is just fantastic. I also have a VDN from them that I got from a Mash and Journey meetup. All of the stuff that I've had from them have been fantastic. They're out of Maryland. I'm still considering them craft at this point, but you guys let me know in the comment section below if it's not. But if Sagamore does not count, I am also going to appease my Pennsylvania fans. This is a bottle right here, Mid-State Distillery. This is kind of cheating a little bit still because this is a single barrel, but you can get some of the regular offerings as well. This is a port-finished five-grain bourbon whiskey called Pencil Tucky out of Mid-State Distillery. They're out of Harrisburg. Again, this is barrel number one. This is 5.6 years. Here in Pennsylvania, it's hard to get something with an older age statement, and we do have a video coming out with something shortly with something a little bit older than this as well. 122.8 proof, so if I got 
got to go craft and I got to keep it local to support both Maryland and Pennsylvania being more local than most. I will say Pennsylvania Mid-State Distillery, if you haven't had a chance to try any of their five grain stuff, they're producing some really good whiskey. Listen, I know some people that are actually sourcing from Sagamore at this point, and I know some more people that definitely love port finished stuff. So either Sagamore or Mid-State Pennsylvania five grain port or just the regular five grain is where we're going to go. Let's get into category number four right now. So category number four is called the unicorn one, which is pretty obvious what that is. A unicorn is basically that bottle in your collection that you're never going to see again, or you're never going to have an opportunity to get. It's a unicorn bottle. Now, for most people that's sitting in the center of their shelf, right in the middle of their collection, and for the longest time, that was this old Rip Van Winkle. I actually gave my buddy a Stag Junior way back in the day when I had two of them. I said, listen, you've been looking for this for a very long time. You have it. About a year or two later, he won a PA lottery. He won this old Rip Van Winkle and he said, listen, I'm going to come over. I'm going to crack this. We're going to pour it up together and then I want you to have it. And that's how I got my hands on this particular bottle right here. But about halfway through May, I declared it bottle kill month. There was about this much left and I had to do it on the 31st of May, which means we don't have any old Rip Van Winkle. So I had to think, does this count or or do I have to pick something else? So then my mind started racing, right? Was it the Weller foolproof? Was it the Stag store pick that I have? But then I thought to myself, my true unicorn for me personally is going to be, and John talks about this bottle a lot, Blue Note Juke Joint Whiskey, but just not any Blue Note. This was hand selected by myself and Whiskey Noobs, Chris over at Whiskey Noobs. This is the first barrel pick selection that I ever did. It's got my name on it. It's got my logo on it. It's got my sticker on it. And for me, this is an odd obvious unicorn, which I base my entire collection around. I never thought four or five years ago that I would have an opportunity to have my name and my logo on a branded bottle of whiskey, such as Blue Note Juke Joint. This is an absolute fantastic bottle with or without my name on it. So the fact that I got to pick this clearly makes this my unicorn, but we've got one more category to go. Let's get into it right now. Now, category number five was my favorite out of all of these categories because it's something unique and it's something different that I never truly thought about before, and it's called the Memory Maker one, right? This is the bottle that you've made memories with. This is a bottle that you hold on to for a specific occasion to pour up, or you've already poured up with family and friends, and it reminds you of that time that you've poured this bottle up before. I love this category. It had me thinking, right? I have a few bottles out there that definitely got poured up with friends over the years, but none better for me specifically than my Widow Jane lucky 13 and let me tell you why right now so I poured up a little bit of this bottle right here and you probably noticed that I have a different wardrobe on and that's because my camera died and I did not notice until post. I was editing the video, there was nothing left at the end and I decided I gotta go back and do this one more time. That being said, the reason I picked this bottle right here will come up in a minute. I gotta tell you a story about myself first. I do not like my volumes being at anything other than zero or five. If you have something weird like this, let me know in the comment section below. But whether it's TV, radio, on my phone, I'll click it five times to make sure the volume's at five or 10 times to make sure it's at 10. I don't do anything other than zeros or fives. Some people do even, some people do odds. I don't do any of that. Zeros or fives, which means I would never like a bottle, especially if it had the number 13 on it until I found out, obviously my daughter was born on October 13th. Now I'm the big whiskey guy in my family, right? I have a brother-in-law that is now into it, but at the time I was pretty much the whiskey guy, which means nobody else was out there thinking about whiskey or good whiskey or anything like that in my family. So when my daughter was born on the 13th, my brother went out and he bought me a bottle of Widow Jane 13, not knowing that I already loved Widow Jane and I wasn't willing to spend the money on this particular bottle myself, but the memories that we made on the day that my daughter was born, drinking this bottle with my father, my brother-in-law, my brother, and my stepfather-in-law was an amazing time. I I loved doing that and that is why I picked this bottle for this particular category. There's no other reason that I would drink this bottle except for that so we do it every year on our birthday and that's a great memory for me. But hey, I appreciate John for this list. This was my favorite category for this particular list. So all of these bottles coming in in all of these different categories was a lot of fun. I gotta know in the comment section below, what bottle would you put in each one of these categories? I know I cheated with a few of these, but I always had a backup just in case it did not work out. In the meantime, make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. I would greatly appreciate it. Almost at 15,000, which is absolutely wild. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube so we can keep bringing you content like this. Check out our Patreon page and our Discord, both those links in the description below. We have some great barrel picks coming out and you're only going to have access to some of them if you are a patron, I can promise you, because one of them was a short barrel and that's going to be a damn good pick. In the meantime though, please don't drink and drive, always drink responsibly, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay picking categories for your whiskey because we got some great ones right here. Cheers y'all. That's actually really freaking good.